Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. And this is Something Saturday where we talk about something we didn't get to talk about the rest of the week. And well, this is kind of a different type of video for this because this is the last time you'll see me before Halloween. So we're going to break down my favorite scary films to watch about this time of year. And I'm going to give you my reasons why. And then I'm going to open it up to you as to whether you agree with my choices or not. And tell me some of yours. So let's jump right into it. All right. So when I think of Halloween, I think not just of the scary, but of the fun. You've got to have some fun with things. So the Universal Monster movies are always at the top of my list. Be it Dracula, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, The Wolfman, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. All of that stuff is up there. It's things I try my hardest to watch every year. And I try to watch all the movies in those franchises because... The black and white movies are classics, and I feel if you haven't seen them, and you've only seen the remakes and reboots and other things that they've done with these movies, you're missing out on what made these such iconic franchises, such iconic movies. And I think that watching them now, even today, even though some things in the movies are outdated, is exactly what makes it fun. So at the top of my list, you could just put anything that is the classic Universal Monsters. And then from there, you've got to go with Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead, say what you want, it is an outright classic. And it's the, it's the iconic movie that made zombies what they are today in society. If for no other reason than that, it should be held up as this example of modern film inspiration. And I believe that if you watch it on a dark night with the lights out, it still gives you a little bit of chills. And it does have a really cool ending if you have never seen the movie. So definitely check that out if you've never seen Night of the Living Dead. It is iconic. And then, of course, there's Poltergeist, the original Poltergeist. Because for a PG-13 movie, this movie was utterly terrifying. And not only that. If you're really interested in something scary, look up the Curse of Poltergeist as well because there is a lot of weird things that happen with that movie. And yes, I don't know if it's true or not. But the thing of it is, a lot of weird stuff did happen. And if you want to be scared, then that movie's not the only thing that can scare you. Some of the behind-the-scenes curses and stuff like that that were put on that movie, the things that happened during filming and after filming of that movie are also stuff that make that movie scary. And knowing, as G.I. Joe would tell you, is half the battle. But <laughs> if you don't know... Check out some of that and then go back and watch those movies because you will come out a little more terrified than you were before. And that's why it's also one of the movies I go to every Halloween. I try to watch that movie at least before Halloween because I always do get scared. And the movies, you know, the second one isn't the most amazing one. But the third one holds a special place in my heart. So when I say Poltergeist, check out all the Poltergeist trilogy. And, you know, really pay close attention because these movies actually are very decently done. And you will see some iconic actors pop up in them. Especially in part three, a lot of people that were in that movie you later saw in bigger things. I mean, Tom Skerritt and Laura Flynn Boyle are in Poltergeist 3. But Poltergeist 1 is always the one that you should remember the most. It is the most iconic of the three movies. And it is very brilliantly done. It's one I watch every year. 
Then you have the Exorcist, which the Exorcist is basically Terrifier 2 before Terrifier 2 grossed people out and made people barf. The Exorcist is famous for having people actually get sick and I think they even passed out. I think people had heart attacks at the Exorcist movie. Um, it's supposed to be this really scary, horrible movie. And the only thing I can think of when I see it is how Beetlejuice said it just got funnier every time he saw it. But it still scares me. It's still a great movie to watch. There's never an ah type of moment anymore because I've seen it over and over again. But it is still one of my favorite movies to watch around this time of year. And I highly recommend it to anyone, especially if you have never seen it. On a more fun note, you also have Fright Night. And Fright Night is amazing because it is kind of this comedy horror film. And I'm talking the original Fright Night, not the Colin Farrell one. Now, the Colin Farrell one, you can say what you want. It's kind of okay. A lot of people liked it. I didn't really care for it that much, only because I am such a big fan of the original with Chris Sarandon as the vampire. And, you know, it's just this crazy little comical fun movie that is just brilliant to watch. And Chris Sarandon is amazing as this very charming vampire who moves in next door to this teenager who is this horror film buff. And his friend, Evil Ed, is even more of a horror fan buff than he is. And, you know, he just, you know, he needs to realize that he needs to leave well enough alone because the vampire isn't going to hurt him as long as he doesn't interfere. But he can't do that because there's a vampire living next door. Now, if that was me, I'm just saying we'd have a whole different conversation because I would be, I would be uh, Jerry's best friend. I'm telling you that right now. Jerry, make me a vampire, let me live forever, and, you know, uh, we'll go from there. Um, <laughs> but it is a great movie, and I would highly recommend it if you don't want to be too scared. Then you have Night of the Demons. Night of the Demons is another one that falls into this category. And again, I'm talking about the original, not the remake. The original movie is much scarier than the remake, in my opinion. And not to mention, the girl that plays Angela is just brilliant. She brings this level of misfit and scary all at once. And the cast does their best job at making you actually like them. Kathy Podwell, who would later go on to play in Dallas as one of JR's brides, actually is in this movie and she is brilliant as well. She does a great job of being the final girl in this movie. I highly recommend it. Again, if you want something that's not over the top, incredibly scary. Something that I watch every year is Nightmare on Elm Street because Nightmare on Elm Street is another one of those. It's an iconic film. It's a true classic. And you can never go wrong with Freddy Krueger. He's still scary today. And that very first movie still sends shivers up my spine to this day in certain scenes. When the girl is being dragged up the wall by an unseen force... That still to this day gets me and makes me kind of just go, oh my God, no. And that's the magic of film. No matter how many times you see it, sometimes a certain scene will get you. And for me, that is one of the most brilliant scenes in any movie. And Nightmare on Elm Street's original movie was a lower budget movie. So I highly recommend you watch that if you haven't ever seen it. Where have you been? No, I'm kidding. If you haven't ever seen it, do check it out. It is a classic and worth watching. And if you have seen it and you don't watch it every year, try watching that along with your Halloween movie marathon because, wow, scariness. 
And then, of course, you have The Evil Dead. Now, The Evil Dead is a movie that I also try to watch every year during this time because that very first Evil Dead movie is a very scary movie in itself. The movie can be a bit silly. Even the first one can be a bit silly, although the second one takes silly to a whole nother level. And if you don't want more intense scares, then I would recommend just skipping the first one and jumping to the second one. A lot of people say you can do that. Me, I'm a completionist, so I want to watch the original Evil Dead, then watch Evil Dead 2, then watch Army of Darkness. So I do that every year as well. If you haven't seen those, then go ahead and check those out as well. Now, then, of course, we have the original Friday the 13th, Nuff Said. It is a truly iconic movie. One of the very first movies that put you in the, in the face of the killer. You get to be the cameraman as the killer walking around. Now, there were a couple movies that have done this before that. But this is the one that, popular, that popularized that. That actually made that feel like it was something to go forward with in future horror movies and it would be duplicated numerous times and a lot of people think that they owe this directly to Friday the 13th and they probably aren't wrong. Now Friday the 13th's original movie had a whole nother look to it. It was more of a murder mystery than a oh wow this person did it. So you had to really kind of take a look and try to figure out who is the killer and if you know you know and if you don't then you need to watch this movie because, again, it is a classic. And last, no horror movie marathon would be complete without the original Halloween. And if you know from previous videos, I did a whole video on the watch order that I watched the Halloween movie series in. So I pick a theory, I pick a theory or two and I put them together. I put them together in that order of whatever order I want for that day, sometimes more than one. Always with the original movie being front and center because Halloween, the original movie, is one of the most classic Halloween movies ever. And you definitely need to be watching it every year. That's my opinion anyway, and I want to hear from you guys what you guys think. What movies do you watch every year and why? All right, so you know what to do. Leave me a comment in the comment box below. Let me know what you think, what movies you watch, etc., etc. We want to hear from you. And also share this video with all of your friends so they can be a part of the conversation as well. And then don't forget to hit that like button. It helps the channel. We like it. And YouTube seems to like that as well. So make sure you're hitting that like button. And then also don't forget Miko wants you to subscribe. You don't want to disappoint Miko. So... Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single video we do. Happy Halloween, everybody. Be safe out there. And at the end of the day, fandom is family.